In today's video, we are going to look at the top five maps in Battlefield 4. These are the maps that I personally think were the best, but I've also taken the community's opinion into consideration and of course looked at the maps that remained most popular over the course of the game's lifespan. To keep it simple, I'll look at the map in terms of conquest, as in Battlefield 4 that is the staple game mode, but in some cases the map in question played quite well in other modes too. If you do or don't agree with this top 5, please leave your thoughts down below in the comment section and I'll be sure to check out what you've written. Propaganda dropped as part of the Dragon's Teeth DLC and focused on infantry combat within a wintertime urban environment. The map was a fantastic mix of close and long range engagements, with the lack of vehicles allowing for prolonged infantry battles, especially on Charlie Flag. The long road running through the centre of the map split the five flags into two main sections, meaning that one team could gain a few flags back fairly easily. Propaganda also had the benefit of being set in an urban environment, meaning it had hard cover, something that really helps create solid infantry gameplay and less of the frustrating open field gameplay that you might experience on maps such as Golmud Railway or Silk Road. The abundance of flanking routes and destructible cover also meant that players would constantly have to move about and think on their feet, something that I think makes a game of 64 man conquest tick. The game also had a massive train that would regularly plough through the map killing anything in its path. It wasn't on the same level as some of the other evolution events in the game, however in my mind that was a good thing. The train created a bit of personality and also helped with tactics as it could be used for cover and baiting tanks into an embarrassing death. Siege of Shanghai is one of the most popular maps in Battlefield 4 and even today, nearly four years after the game's launch, it remains in virtually every Conquest server rotation and has many dedicated 24-7 servers. The only issue with including this map on this list is the attack helicopter spam that quite often ruins the experience of people who don't know how to deal with it. The map itself first appeared in the Battlefield 4 testing stages and has since been a staple within the game's community. Whether you are a tanker, a heli pilot or an infantry player, it offers a bit of everything and although controversially included, there is no doubt that it is a popular map. For me, the map suffered from players not willing to play the objective and make use of the vehicles and flanking routes that DICE made available. For example, in a game of Conquest Large you are provided with many jet skis that can be used to bypass all of the roads and sneak onto any flag. If used correctly, one squad can completely destroy a team with back caps and well placed spawn beacons. The attack heli, although very powerful on this map due to the high buildings, can be easily countered with a mixture of transport and heli teamwork, MRAP or tank gunner 50 cal suppression or infantry rockets, unfortunately including the Stinger or Igler. I was personally really looking forward to the release of the Shanghai night map as the ability to get on the roofs was being removed and the vehicle numbers were also being reduced. This would have meant brilliant infantry engagements in an urban environment but unfortunately we never got to experience it. Gulen Peaks was part of the China Rising expansion pack for Battlefield 4 and was based within the tall cast formations of North East China. The map consisted of a network of caves and flag layouts that resulted in fast paced infantry gameplay with the added help of a transport helicopter and small passenger vehicles. For me it was a complete change of pace with DICE taking the opportunity to leave out tanks, lavs and attack helicopters where it would have been quite easy for them to have put them in and gone down the same road as many maps such as Operation Outbreak or Dragon Pass. Both short range and long range engagements are possible, with the transport helicopter allowing a quick bypass to flags unattended by the enemy team. According to an extensive piece of research by Mishimib, link is in the description down below, Gulen Peaks had nearly a 50-50 win-loss ratio for each team, 39% were considered close, with only 12% being one-sided. For a Battlefield 4 map, these stats are seriously impressive, and if you've ever played this map, it cannot be argued that the games are balanced throughout, with hardly any all-cap situations occurring on a 64-man Conquest server. Maybe the most played map on Battlefield 4, Operation Locker provided players with another Metro that was of course incredibly popular in Battlefield 3. While it might not be everybody's cup of tea, Operation Locker was and still is one of the most played and most popular maps still in server rotations. This is one of the few maps that did a linear flag layout correctly, with an outside and an inside allowing for multiple flanking routes and ways to outmaneuver the enemy team. Unfortunately, poor balancing and team stacking has often led to this map being constantly abused by infantry tryhards, leading to base camping situations and a lot of players leaving. However, when played correctly, it is a fast-paced, action-packed infantry paradise. 
The central Charlie flag is pivotal in the Conquest game mode, and an objective playing squad can completely turn the tide of a game, which in my opinion is exactly what should be happening. The map has also been home to some of the most ridiculous backrages with massive point stacks and only in battlefield moments recorded on a regular basis. A great map and in my opinion it'll be one that is remade in a future battlefield title. Finally we have number 1, Zavod 311. Zavod was a map included in the vanilla release of Battlefield 4 and in my opinion is the most balanced conquest map out there. The map has an even 6 flags which means with the conquest scoring system in Battlefield 4 the game often goes down to the wire and can be easily turned even if your team is a few hundred tickets down. The vehicle balance is great although I'm not a massive fan of the AA gun as it is often the case that it camps on a hill and ruins the game for the enemy team in the scout and transport helicopter. The tanks are really powerful as well which in my opinion is exactly what they should be. Tanks should be feared in a battlefield game and should require the enemy team to work together in order to take it out. The flag assets are also well balanced, which is something of a rarity in Battlefield 4. The LAVs can be picked up at either end of the map on capping the flags, and this often leads to one team trying to back cap the other team by taking a quad bike or transport helicopter around the map and scooping up the enemy vehicles. Hard cover at the centre of the map leads to really good infantry gameplay, whilst other flags are harder to cap on foot, but easily taken if you work as a team. There is also a night variant of this map, goes by the name of Graveyard Shift, Again, a fantastic map to play in a tank, but for me, not as balanced as the daytime mode. Both, however, are really, really great, and for me, Zavod is my favourite map on Battlefield 4. There are many other maps that could have been on this list, and this is, of course, a personal opinion backed up with some basic facts and statistics. Please feel free to leave a list of your favourite five Battlefield 4 maps down below, and I'll be sure to check it out. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing to keep up to date with the future content, and leave a like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.